Coming up, spring has arrived and the threat of severe weather comes with it. What you should do if you find yourself caught in a sudden storm. This was a storm no one wanted to get caught in. Looking back on a stormy night 20 years ago when giant hailstones pummeled parts of North County. Plus the spring outlook when things will really start warming up and when it's safe to plant those flowers. Thanks for joining us on this beautiful first full day of spring. I'm Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell. You know, spring can provide warm and sunny days, but it also can bring an increase in severe weather. December and January were relatively warm, each more than three degrees warmer than average. We expected February to be our challenging month in our winter outlook, and Mother Nature did not disappoint. A few dirty snow piles are still in the parking lot, but the President's Day snow didn't last long as the more typical La Nina pattern returns. La Nina is the cooler than average water temperature on the sea surface in the Central Pacific. There is a connection to our weather patterns from La Nina or its warmer water cousin, El Nino. Springtime weather in La Nina tends to concentrate warmer, more humid air over the southern plain states. This leads to better thunderstorm chances and a higher chance of hailstorms or tornadoes. St. Louis is known for its hailstorms. In 2001 and 2012, two of the costliest ever in the U.S. occurred during April. Each produced more than a billion dollars in damage. From the middle of March into April appears to be the stormiest part of our spring and the wettest time. The threat for major river flooding is lower this year since the rivers aren't already running high like the last couple of years. It would be rare not to have some minor river flooding along the Mississippi or Missouri rivers, but beyond that, it will take an awful lot of rain upstream. Spring warmth will likely happen rapidly this year. Warmer than average temperatures appear likely into April. That means spring pollen will ramp up quickly. There may be a quick hit of cold air causing a frost or freeze in April, and that could affect the apple and peach blossoms. Strong to severe thunderstorm chances continue into May, but the warmer weather should be locked in. That means at least it will be safe to plant the summer flowers. By the time we get to Mother's Day, we should be able to get the garden really going. Now, spring marks the beginning of tornado season. We want to take you back to a particularly dangerous spring 10 years ago. On April 22nd, 2011, an EF4 tornado with 160 mile per hour winds left a trail of damage from Maryland Heights all the way to Granite City. 2,700 buildings were damaged, including St. Louis Lambert Airport. The cost of the repairs at the airport added up to more than $20 million. Nearly everything had to be replaced, including more than 300 glass panes. Luckily, no one was seriously injured or killed. Unfortunately, that was not the case exactly one month later in Joplin, when an EF5 tornado with winds topping 200 miles per hour tore through the city, destroying everything in its path. 158 people died. More than 1,000 were hurt. It's important you and your family have a severe weather safety plan. Here's Anthony Slaughter. Okay, say you're outside enjoying a nice spring day, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, tornado sirens go off. What do you do? If you're near the house, say at a park, or just in the backyard, get inside. The basement is best if you don't have windows. If there are windows in your basement, try to find a closet. But let's say you're outside, out and about, perhaps at a sporting event, outside. Then what? Getting indoors is crucial. Most of the time, if you're at a restaurant or sporting venue, they will have tornado shelter signs posted and will typically gather the people and get them out of harm's way. But what do you do if you're at an open park, say, like Forest Park? Well, I know this park pretty well, and so I think to myself, where is there an indoor facility that's sturdy that I can get to? And immediately, I think of the zoo. And once inside, remember that little tornado drill they taught you when you were in grade school? You want to protect your spine. So take your hands, cuff them, and cover the back part of your neck. Also, always keep your shoes on to protect your feet. And lastly, practice your plan. This will help keep you and your family safe every time in a severe weather event. From Five on Your Side, I'm meteorologist Anthony Slaughter. Amma, Missouri has a plan, and they're launching a new effort to make sure the lights stay on when the bad weather rolls through. Five on Your Side's Tracy Hinson has details about the nearly $11 million project. We're here in North County at the corner of 
Guthrie and Woodson. It's an area St. Louis County Executive Sam Page knows well. This is uh, really literally across the street from the house my wife grew up in, about four houses that way. With lines above ground, it's easy for a powerful St. Louis storm to knock the power out and more work for crews to bring it back online. This is a really important investment by Ameren to help us keep the lights on in North County when we have some of the severe weather that the Midwest is famous for. That investment? Poles, like this one. Composite? Not wood. Sturdy, too. What we're doing here is we're installing a, a, a new pole today. And go. So yes, it's just a pole, but this pole might help us keep the lights on next time a storm rolls through. So the technology behind the composite, it's uh, rated to sustain 100 plus mile an hour winds uh, throughout the territory. And also what it does is it helps support adjacent poles on either side of it so that you don't have that kind of a domino cascading effect. So that will certainly limit interruptions during thunderstorms and strong wind days. But the upgraded lines Amron is stringing to those poles will help keep the power flowing during winter outbreaks too. So winter loading, when I say loading, that's when there's the greatest strain on our system as far as power, when it's, when it's needed the most. So when you upgrade our power lines from a smaller diameter to a larger diameter, it allows you to provide flexibility to provide that power back and forth at a greater pace. That will minimize outages by routing power through other lines. Tracy Henson, five on your side. Amra, Missouri is slated to wrap up the project next month, hopefully ahead of the spring severe weather season. Spring pollen does not mix well with the pandemic. Coming up, how to tell the difference between allergies and COVID-19. Plus, the one over-the-counter treatment doctors say offers the most relief during allergy season. Welcome back. Well, we can't talk about spring in St. Louis without talking about allergies. Well, certainly here in St. Louis, we are entering into the spring allergy season. Thanks to tree pollens and mold, Dr. Mark Dykwitz is chief of allergy at Slew Care. He's predicting an average allergy season, but average in St. Louis does not mean mild. Spring allergies are always significant and uh, we would anticipate that the trees will keep going depending on what the weather is doing until probably mid-May, then be succeeded by grass pollen season uh, into June. Many people in St. Louis find themselves taking several allergy medicines. Dr. Dykwitz says depending on the severity of your allergies, one may do the trick. Uh, the single most effective treatment for allergies is generally a nasal cortisone spray such as Flonase, but there's any number of other brands available both over the counter and by prescription. If you choose nasal spray, it's important to use it correctly to get the most out of the medicine. People are putting sprays of whatever sort in the nose and then it just sort of drips out. So we actually talk about putting the spray in while you're upright and then tipping over and maybe even uh, bending towards your knees if you can, holding that for about 20 seconds and then going back up. Allergies also present challenges during a pandemic since both allergies and COVID-19 can affect the nose. Loss of smell is something that points much more to COVID rather than to uh, nasal allergies. Runny nose and a cough are also associated with both COVID-19 and allergies. Dr. Dykwitz says making the correct diagnosis can be tricky. One other symptom that tends to go more with allergies would be if you're having itching. So itching of the nose, itching of the eyes, that points to allergy rather than COVID. And the doctor says if you also suffer from severe allergies, you should consider getting allergy shots. Another strategy, avoidance. Keep the windows closed during peak pollen season. And if you spend a lot of time outside, change your clothes when you return home. It's also important to note the spring allergy season could become more severe depending on temperatures and the amount of rain we get. Hail, could you imagine something the size of a baseball falling from the sky? Well, it happened in North County the staggering amount of damage it caused to one car dealership.
So far this year, it's been pretty peaceful along the Mississippi River. Flooding just hasn't been the issue, nor as severe as it was in 2019. But after that February freeze, when we saw the big muddy looking more like a Norwegian Ford, people started wondering if all that ice will factor into the flood season. Five on your side's Tracy Henson gets to the bottom of the spring flood outlook. It was a common, uh, common occurrence in the um, 19th and early 20th century. And there's photographs of, the, of people walking out across the ice and stuff like that. Back in those days, ice on the Mississippi was a treat. Well, you know, uh, here in St. Louis, in the 18th and 19th century, when the river froze, they would actually harvest the ice. Locks and dams now break up the ice before it gets to that stage and sends it downstream, where park ranger Doug Harding can watch it from the best seat in the house. This is a, a recent photograph from the top of the arch. And when you sit back and think about it, you might wonder, while well, all that ice has to go somewhere, will it melt away and make our river levels rise? I'm not aware of any flooding issues right now, and I think the river is low enough this week, the Mississippi rose to meet flood stage, but it is forecasted to drop drastically over the next weeks. It's not a, an overwhelming concern, but it's something to keep an eye on. As we get into the swing of spring, hope for off and on storms with ample time to dry out in between. Tracy Hinson, five on your side. And of course, the big thing that drives our flooding is the heavy rain and we saw some of that this week. Last week's rain resulted in quick rises on the area rivers and streams. Now the good news is that it was mainly minor flooding and most of the rivers have crested. The exception to that, the Mississippi River in Chester. It's near crest right now. All the other rivers are starting to fall. This is a low water crossing and there are so many of them around the eastern Ozarks just south and southwest of St. Louis. They're often the first to flood, so never drive through water that's covering the road. Turn around, don't drown. April 10th, 2001. A storm packing winds of 70 miles an hour and hailstones the size of baseballs rain down on the region. It's called the Tri-State Hailstorm, stretching from eastern Kansas to southwestern Illinois. It's considered the most costly hailstorm in U.S. history, causing one and a half billion dollars in damage at the time. According to the National Weather Service, North St. Louis County took the brunt of the storm in our area. It is definitely a, a day that, uh, that uh that I will not forget it. John Londoff Jr. owns Johnny Londoff Chevrolet. He can't believe it's been 20 years since the hailstorm pounded his fluorescent dealership. Well, I think it took 20 years off my life when it first happened. He got a call from one of his managers who held up his flip phone so Londoff could hear what was happening. I could hear these massive, uh, almost the size of a baseball, you know, really large lemon or lime, uh, just pummeling, uh, you know, the uh, vehicles and the dealership. My wife, Mimi, said, uh, don't don't take your dad. You know, he won't be able to just look and see the disasters. And what a disaster it was. More than 800 cars, trucks, and SUVs were damaged, as well as three buildings and the dealership sign. Then there was the glass. It took us weeks to, to, to sweep all of the uh, safety glass, the windshields that, you know, imploded. and. Uh, if you looked at some of that safety glass, you know, in the uh, on the asphalt, some of it looked like a diamond. <laughs> we had to be very careful that people didn't cut themselves. Employees were devastated as well. I had one of my managers who's still here with us uh, uh, in tears, and uh, in the, he was literally hugging me, and he's like, uh, um, "How am I going to make my house payment?" And I'm like, "You know, well, you know uh, we're going to make your house payment. You'll be fine." I said, we, we, we will find a way to get through this. Then came the repairs. First task, finding a dent removal company. Which we did uh, out of Texas. Nobody here locally wanted to touch this stuff that was so large. And they set up two tents up on our upper lot. And we kept them very, very busy for about uh, five to six months. The dealership ended up selling the vehicles, some with dents, some without. It took several months to get back on track. You know, but we got through it. It took a lot of good people. You know, I might have, uh, you know, been, uh, you know, at the helm, but it took some unbelievable, you know, teammates of mine that made it, uh, made it uh, come together. And insurance claims tell the story. In Missouri, 
120,000 home claims, 65,000 auto, and 8,000 commercial claims. Other damage included all of the SUVs parked outside at Ford's Hazelwood Assembly Plant and 24 commercial and military aircraft at Lambert Airport. Julie Fox also remembers that night and quite vividly. She and her four young children were in the basement when hailstones came crashing through the window and bounced across the floor. Julie shared these pictures showing some of the damage at her house. I'm meteorologist Jim Castillo. Coming up, a little science behind the wild swings in our temperature and how our spring has evolved over the last couple of decades. Wild swings and weather, nothing new in St. Louis, but as meteorologist Jim Castillo reports, scientists have found a shift in weather patterns over the past few decades. Climate Central is an independent group of scientists who research and report the facts about our changing climate and how it affects our lives. Spring conditions are arriving earlier in the U.S., and while that may sound nice, it does have consequences. St. Louis is known for extreme weather and wild swings in temperature. Wind chills, they're 10 to 25 degrees below zero through tomorrow morning. Our weather team was out reporting on the polar vortex that brought the extreme cold for a few weeks and all that snow in February. Then March came in quietly with above average temperatures. Even Climate Central says our spring arrives three days earlier in recent years. Are you noticing more wild swings and extremes in our weather patterns? Climate Central confirms the weather we are experiencing. We still get a winter, and at times the cold swings can be extremely cold, but they aren't lasting as long, and we warm up quickly afterwards. Look at Climate Central's map. Tons of red on it. The red indicates the change in the number of spring days with above normal temperatures. So long-term temperature trends in our area, on average, indicate spring is getting warmer. What does all this mean? Early spring temperatures actually lengthen the growing season, and that will extend the allergy season. Also, with the warmer temperatures, the severe weather season is getting longer. Meteorologist Jim Castillo, five on your side. And as we look right now at the spring forecast from the Climate Prediction Center across the country, most of the U.S. is going to be warmer than average and we're included in that of course in the bi-state region keep in mind la nina is still going on as we talked about at the beginning of the program and with la nina this is a typical pattern we normally get the warmer weather meanwhile the greatest chances for above average precipitation and rainfall and maybe even storms off to the east and northeast of st louis through the ohio valley unfortunately a place that looks to be very dry into the southwest here. Those areas down into the southwest are areas that are undergoing a major drought at this point, and they could use some of that rain. Here at home, March, we've already had quite a bit of rain in the last week and a half. April looks to be somewhat unsettled as well. Thanks for watching Spring in St. Louis today. Hopefully this will prepare you for the season ahead. One of our favorite places is the Missouri Botanical Garden, and we leave you today with some drone shots of the beauty.